Sojourner Truth was born under the name Isabel Bumfrey in 1797. She was born into slavery, and before she was a teenager, she was bought and sold four times. While she was enslaved, most work she took part in was hard physical labor with brutal punishments. When Truth was nine years old, she got separated from her parents and relocated to John Neely's plantation in Kingston, New York. Once at Neely, she was sold two more times, remaining under John Dumont in Park West, New York, until she escaped her freedom in 1826. The Dumonts did not treat Truth well at all. She was harassed by John's wife and raped by John on multiple occasions. While at the Dumonts in 1815, she met a young man named Robert, who she fell in love with, but Robert's owners were against the relationship and beat Robert to death after meeting with Truth when he was advised not to. Years down the road, she met another enslaved man named Thomas, who she would marry and have three kids with. Prior to her marriage, Truth had two kids, one who was the result of being raped by Dumont. On July 4, 1799, New York had passed a law for gradual abolition of slavery, meaning children born to enslaved women would be considered free and just had to work for their mother's owners until they were in their 20s, making them seem more of an indentured servant rather than a slave, but this did not happen. Again in 1817, a law was passed stating that ch these children would be free on July 4th of 1827. With that being stated, Dumont had promised Truth he would emancipate her before that date, but he later changed his mind, taking back what he had stated. This prompted Truth to escape the chains of Dumont, and she brought her daughter along, saving the rest of her children later. Truth and her daughter seeked refuge from the Van, Van Wagonins in New Platts, New York. The Van Wagonins paid $20 to Dumont to keep them safe up until Emancipation Day in 1827. They also helped Truth in getting her son back, as he was illegally sold in the state of Alabama. The Van Wagonins assisted Truth in taking his Kate to court, fighting to get her son back, in which the court ruled in Truth's favor and her son was able to come home. During her time at the Van Wagonins, Truth also had a spiritual awakening and that would start her path to her new life. She began exploring her faith more, and in 1843, Truth became a Methodist, and this is when she changed her name to Sojourner Truth. In 1844, she moved to New Hampton, Massachusetts, where she joined the New Hampton Association of Education and Industry, which was founded by abolitionists and supported women's rights and religious tolerance. Truth also met William Lloyd Garrison and Frederick Douglass. In 1840, Truth wrote a book about her life, The Narrative of Sojourner Truth, a Northern Slave, and she spoke at the first Women's Rights Convention. In 1851, she attended another women, Women's Rights Convention in Ohio, where she gave her famous speech, Ain't I a Woman?, which discusses the rights of African Americans and women, along with equality. She spent the remainder of her life speaking about the rights of African Americans and women, pushing for the right for them to have the right to vote. During the Civil War, she assisted in recruiting African-American men to the Union Army. In 1864, she began working for the National Freedmen's Association Relief, assisting in helping slaves escape to their freedom. Truth advocated greatly for the needs of African-Americans and getting them their rights. She even went to the polls herself on Election Day to make a point, and unfortunately she got turned away. She also fought for desegregation and in one of her own situations where a streetcar conductor tried to block her from riding, um, she got him arrested and won her case. Um, so Joyner True spent her final years living in Battle Creek, Michigan. She was remembered as someone who advocated and dedicated most of her time to African American and women's rights. She assisted in bringing many slaves to freedom and fighting for their rights. She is remembered by the strong words she spoke and her efforts in the women's suffrage movement.